Hey folks, before we get started today, a quick heads up to our Apple Podcast listeners. If you would be so kind as to leave a review, I'll be sure and throw you a shout out during next week's episode. I promise. And if this sounds like begging, it probably is. But it really would mean a lot. Also, this episode is rated PG-13 for language. Okay, now here's me starting the actual episode. Hi there. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to the Film Nuts Podcast. I'm your host, Taylor D. Adams. The early to mid-2000s saw the rise of forensic-based procedural dramas. But there was one show that combined captivating science with wit, charm, and heart. Airing from 2005 to 2017, Bones, starring Emily Deschanel and David Boreanaz, was both a fan and critic favorite for almost the entirety of the show's impressive 12 seasons. Bones' ability to pair science with storytelling really resonated with this week's guest. Jen Hallweil is the chief story engineer for Go Beyond Labs, a creative agency creating content that celebrates diversity and inclusion in science, technology, and the arts. Jen is also the director and executive producer of Financially Naked, a docu-series about a group of financial coaches who travel the country to help individuals improve their finances, secure their life goals, and attain their dreams without the fear and shame money matters can often bear. Jen and I go way back, and one of the most impressive things about her is her ability to break down how stories work and what makes them effective. We talk about her admiration for Bones, as well as diversity and representation on television, and how law enforcement organizations are portrayed on screen. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy listening to Jen Hallweil talk about Bones on the Film Nuts Podcast. Um, the first couple months of quarantine, I fucking loved it. Like, <laughs> I, I'm an introvert. I'm in New York City because I need to sort of be right now for my career. It's been so nice to have alone time and to like be able to just not respond to people and have to be expected to respond to people in the same way. So that was great. Um, the last month has been a bit crazier. I mean, there was the protests and um, I'm trying to evaluate like what my next step is. So a little yeah. more comfortable, but yeah, like I, you know, my inner introvert loves quarantine. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that for sure. What about you? Are you liking it in North Carolina? Uh, yeah, it's fine. Things are, things are weird. Like for me, cause the projects that I've been working on, like the summer is kind of my downtime anyway. So I'm used to that, but the difference is everything else is sh shut down. So I can't really like take advantage and like go do stuff. But yeah, no, other than that, I'm, I'm my off season. I'm trying to keep super busy. So that's why I'm doing this. Um, cool. and it's been a lot of fun so far thinking of me yeah of course um so you've got a show financially naked yes tell me about it give me the whole deal <laughs> i appreciate you shouting it out um of course basically uh my my approach to it was queer eye for your finances so i've uh -huh. always loved shows like queer eye where it's like community focused and you're helping someone who's like needing to change their life for the better but i never really resonated with it because I'm, I'm i'm like a minimalist and also like, you know, not super into makeup and all of that stuff. And so I just, I always wanted that approach, but to really tackling systemic issues and like health and wellness and finance. Mm -hmm. So the way we started this is we launched it as a web series, tackling particularly the financial aspects. And we partnered with Financial Gym, which is an awesome organization that helps people who are struggling to get their finances in order or may have their finances in order, but want to save for particular goals, figure out how to trim some of the waste. And, and they have these trainers that work with you and sort of teach you the best steps. We'll teach you what a health savings account is or an IRA or how to budget um, and things like that, how to improve your credit score, how to negotiate a better salary with your employer. Mm -hmm. And so we, we picked five stories to start for the first season of the web series and it's on Financial Gym's Facebook page, Facebook watch page. And it's, um, yeah, we, we tackle, you know, I'm actually really grateful we were lucky that we had some incredible people that we interviewed prior to this Black Lives Matters movement, but that touched on a lot of the same things. Yeah. So um, Dr. Mathit Bateau like studies intersectional feminism and teaches it at, at City College, but she also is, um, she has lupus, right? And so she's yeah. talking about what it's been as an African-American to be in the medical system 
and to advocate for herself and how she's actually had to use sites like Facebook to like learn about experimental medications and like advocate for new medications to her doctors. Um, and then we uh, did a great episode with this woman Rose in DC who, um, what actually got her starting to save significant money was she moved to a more expensive apartment because counterintuitively, the way we don't think about poverty traps is she was living somewhere super cheap, but it was like two hours away from work. So she was losing tons of time and money commuting, right. gas, low energy, comes home and she's in a neighborhood that's like, um, you know, a, a food, what's called a food desert. It's all oh, like yeah. dogs and everything around. And so she was like eating a ton of like unhealthy food, fast food, processed food. And so she moved to an apartment that was much nicer, has like a farmer's market in her backyard. She's eating healthier. She's saving money. She's saving time on her commute. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was such like a beautiful sort of counterintuitive thing that I didn't really think about a lot of the time, but really also talks about why it does take a community and a village when we're talking about financial health and financial literacy. Like we learn that from other people and we build that with other people. And so it is like a community effort. Yeah. Um, actually, those are the two episodes that I watched that you sent me. I, those are really good. They're not only really well done. I just they're good yeah. stories, too. Um, yeah. And it made me like <laughs> it made me think about, OK, what am I blowing money on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Our whole crew, the entire time we were filming, we were like, there's definitely like moments someone would say something and we'd all look at the crew person we knew that had that issue, whether right. it was like, the fancy cars or like for me it's travel is where i spend most of my budget but yeah i would i blow most of my money on food not like groceries but like eating out i mean nowadays is a little bit different but yeah <laughs> i'm in that same boat um so when i reached out to you and wanted to talk about your favorite movie or tv show you wanted to talk about bones and this is a show that i've probably seen a handful of episodes of uh and I was never, I never saw enough to get invested and not from avoiding it just for something I just haven't watched a lot of, but I know a ton of people who love this show. So I want you to tell me why you love it so much. Yeah. So, um, a lot of the core ethos as we've already touched on of what I love in content is, um, this concept of teams and communities. I think the platonic version of storytelling that we've been sold for like many hundreds of years of like the myth of the self-made man and you know it's like a hero's journey it's this one core character and he's got some sidekicks and he's got a villain he's got to overcome things like it's such an oversimplified form of storytelling that probably made sense when you needed a campfire and things that were easily memorable mm -hmm. but now we've advanced and we know that when you build really amazing things like in the real world it takes teams it takes collaboration it isn't just elon musk it isn't just jack dorsey and i want that to change like in our storytelling paradigms i want to know about elon musk's team i want them to be as famous as elon musk i think mm -hmm. that we would have a very different society if we stop propping up this sort of like figurehead archetype as to how success happens i got it's you very much like a pull yourself up by your bootstraps myth, right? Yeah, yeah. And so um, what I love first and foremost about Moans is that it's a team that they're all really dependent on each other. They have very versatile and diverse skills and they need all of them to successfully help people and solve these crimes. I found glass, I found pollen, which you want first. Pollen. Uh, perhaps you could swing by archeology span on your way to your- uh, No, no swinging. All right, her height makes no sense and her spine length is wacky. Dr. Brennan? Okay, calculate the height off the femur and assume the fire shrunk her spine. I don't think you should talk so much about other cases on court day. You might get confused. One simple question, a Syrian, Hittite, or Egyptian- Dr. Brennan. Five minutes. Bones. What's that, Buttercup? If you sign off on these tissue markers, Angela can finish the facial reconstruction. Why did you say Buttercup? What's up, Buttercup? Is amusing, rhyming, linguistic meme. This is the latest Jane Doe from Limbo. How about this for an amusing, rhyming, linguini? See you later, alligator. Please don't refer to bone storage as Limbo. Five minutes. There are thousands of human remains down there waiting to be identified. Limbo seems an appropriate name. No sign of foul play. If you have time for this, you have time for my hit eye. Tissue depth of the cheekbones and along the jawline looks a little deep to me but otherwise out of limbo back on earth and on our way to court thanks so like there's the character that has the emotional iq there's the character that's like really good with experiments and finding the things that are often overlooked bones mm -hmm. is you know hyper logical but very strong attention to detail 
Um, and so, you know, watching how all of those characters interact and influence each other was always really beautiful for me. And they all sort of got their own arcs over the series rather than it being just Bones's journey. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the other thing that I love about it is the, the, you know, science and the technology and the things that have really built healthy, equitable societies, if you see it in really simple and fun ways, right? Like they'll do experiments with dummies or they'll blow things up or, mm -hmm. you know, they'll like um, hang fake skeletons and, and things like that, like do 3D modeling and computer graphics. And so it was always so beautiful to sort of like see how technology is evolving and see how we can use it to improve societies. Um, that, that was pretty cool. And then, yeah, I mean, just like from a basic premise, strong female protagonist, I'm obviously going to be all about. And yeah. um, sort of that like Nancy Drew form of storytelling, I've always really loved of like murder, mystery, whodunit, that there's yeah. you know, a goal and an objective in each episode. Yeah. It is a nice formula that like there's something that's a puzzle within the larger character arcs that's beautiful to kind of watch. Like House is another example of that, mm -hmm. where he always is trying to sort of solve for something. Yeah. Um this came out 2005 is when this show first aired did uh this show have anything to do whether it be uh it, an impetus or just another kind of form of inspiration for you going down the career path you're currently going down i mean probably for sure but i always think those things for me at least are so multifaceted like i i don't have that story of like my dad died of this thing and now i want to go study it the rest of my life like i right. just that um you know i was good at math and science i knew i had a love and an affinity for math and science I also loved storytelling and um i had a very winding career path in terms of finding what how to how to best blend those things right like i tried one completely ignoring the other and then i tried another completely ignoring science and technology i just did storytelling for a while right. Now I've found this nice blended model mm -hmm. that really lets me think about science and tech and ethics and, and humanistic questions um, through storytelling, and I love that. Um, what did you, I mean, we've, you've talked a lot about what you have enjoyed about this show. Um, is this a show that you watched from the beginning, and did you watch it with a, with people like were there for your close friends did you all like maybe get together and watch it or at least watch it and then discuss it or like did you guys do anything like that no i'm very much um a loner when it comes to watching content like i've never okay. been the person that tunes in every week at the same time and like game of thrones it i'm very yeah. much a, and actually usually what i like and prefer is films okay. um recently because i like being able to like a book you read it you put it down and you're done and then you think about it Versus, like, shows are a commitment. You have to really love, love, yeah. love to really commit to it. Um, but, yeah, with Bones, I don't remember when I got into it. It definitely wasn't when it first started. It was a couple of years into college. Okay. But, um, but it was one of those things where, like, I would binge watch a season. And um, it is one of those things, like, if I'm really sick or I'm really tired or burnt out and I want to just throw something on that I enjoy that makes me feel good, mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a show that, like, I've revisited um rather than just like watching it once and, and being done with it um but yeah no i'm not i'm not i don't tend to sit around with people and watch and discuss things ironically for a story talk i do tend to talk to other storytellers about how we tell stories yeah but not really watching it with them i gotcha um is there is there anybody you've tried to like recommend the show to like whether oh, when you when you have these discussions about storytelling yeah yeah everyone all the time like any <laughs> first off any male filmmaker that i meet when they're like okay what is your feminist like archetype of what good shows look like that is definitely okay. one that i go towards um you know it's it's one that i reference a lot when talking about actors and actresses like there's there's sort of a typecast thing that happens with actors and it's kind of frustrating what was beautiful about bones is she's gorgeous right and she's intelligent and a lot of times the way we perpetuate by the way is that dinging driving you crazy yes <laughs> I'll wait, I'll wait. No, it's okay it's okay well, i know you're here. you're living in the most densely populated place of any guest i've had on the show so far so i know <laughs> things are going to happen literally there's a sky rise across the street um <laughs> so yeah i'm as a new yorker i can tune it out to a point but yeah you know, 
Um, but yeah, so with Bones, like, you know, you see these things, like a lot of times actresses will get told if you're gonna play like the scientist type or whatever, you have to be like nerdy or you have to have glasses or, you, mm -hmm. you know, like there's this archetype of what we believe a woman in science should look like that is really um, frustrating for me. And so, you know, I always love more characters like Iron Man was who I loved before I learned about Bones growing up. Like that, mm -hmm. you know, I was in the comic book culture as a kid and, and Batman and stuff like that. And they were these like genius, gorgeous characters and you just didn't have as many female archetypes for that. And so Bones came along in, in that way, it was really beautiful. You know, it's kind of like X-Files with Scully. It's, um, yeah. You, you have these characters that are, you know, the full package and they don't have to in any way like dumb it down to be beautiful or make themselves look less beautiful to be seen as intelligent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at the time too, I did think it was super uh, refreshing. Actually, I went back and watched just the pilot this morning just to kind of re, re uh, acquaint myself with what was going on. And it was so cool because during the time this show came out, I felt like we started getting into relatively lighthearted dramas, if that makes sense. Like there's a lot of fun to be had with shows like this. Um, and to also be introduced to her character and within, you know, the, the, the first scene is like, she's in an airport and she like kicks the ass of a, a Homeland security agent that didn't identify himself properly. And so right away, we're introduced to a character that we really haven't seen before. Yeah, diving head first in a pit of cadavers is no way to handle a messy breakup. Angela, nothing Pete and I ever did was messy. <laughs> you were not doing the right thing. Sir, why are you following us? Oh, attack security, hello? Who runs this airport? Kick his ass. Police, come step back now. Uh, he attacked me. Uh, I'm Homeland Security. Oh, uh, little misunderstanding here. You can put away your guns. What, is she in charge now? No, I'll tell you when you can lower your weapons. Hand over the bag. Uh, is that what this is about? Do you think nowadays we still have to, with so much content going on everywhere, um, do you still feel we have to put an emphasis on having like a, air quotes, strong female lead, or can we just have leads that are female? I would love it to be the latter, but I don't think we're there yet. Like, gotcha. I do think the advocacy still has to be there. You still have to fight for it because mm -hmm. just the way both implicit bias works, what we're used to seeing and so what we expect to see and who a lot of the core decision makers are in media, um, they're going to cater to stories that resonate with them, right? So until you have much more diverse and inclusive executive producing teams, directors, writers, tables, production, but like production companies, and then distributors, right? Like almost all of the distributors are male led and male owned and even Quibi, the new social network, it's really a male owned network that they hired a female CEO to lead, which is a good first step, right? Mm -hmm. But um, that, that sense of ownership, like, you know, I think that's important because like women really very strongly need to see it, but also men need to see it because men are so used to seeing stories about themselves. They don't have to think outside of their perspectives and yeah. gain empathy in the same way. Like, you know, we talk about this a lot in intersectional feminism, but like women and people of color, we're used to like watching Harry Potter and being able to identify with Harry Potter. It's not super weird for us to imagine ourselves as a different gender or a different race and what mm -hmm. that, you know, would feel like. But for a lot of white guys, like they've never had to watch something that had a lead that didn't look like them to find content that they loved. Mm -hmm. And so um, I don't know that that empathy building builds in the same way. And I think that that also plays into like implicit bias of why, you know, we, we've shown, right? Like if you have resumes of a male scientist and a female scientist, and they're like exactly the same. John Smith gets like more credit than Jen Smith, like they're ranked higher. And, and I think a lot of that subconscious cueing gets changed when you see more and more media that you can readily think of as your archetypes. Mm -hmm. What kind of changes have you seen recently toward more of this more, a more overall representative television culture? Yeah, so recently. Um, this is a bad time to admit I don't own a television. I Netflix it. Um, <laughs> 
That's exactly. I see. I say TV. Everyone says TV, but it's you know it's, it's streaming. Well, no, TV is a real thing. People forget that. But like, I my roommate had Spectrum that I was living with until recently, and so like I realized there are like thousands and thousands of TV channels. Like that's still a thing. Science Channel is still a thing, although mm-hmm. I kind of wish it wasn't because all their content is kind of sexist lately. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, like Nat Geo. Nat Geo is great. Um, I lately I'm more into docs. So again, like. Queer Eye is what I've watched. Um, yeah. Nat Geo's had some beautiful documentaries about like science and earth and climate change. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I've seen a lot of shows. I know in New York, there aren't a ton. Um, pretty little, I will say Reese Witherspoon's company is doing pretty well with that. So like Pretty Little yeah. Fire was pretty progressive and beautiful. Little, little fires everywhere. I, little, so yeah. there's, there's so many shows with little in them. I get confused so much between yeah. Pretty yeah. Little Liars and Big Little Lies and Little Fires Everywhere. Yeah, I think I just combined all three of those. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's a beautiful story, and it, it shows race dynamics and motherhood dynamics, and it's beautiful. You know, and it, it is. It does touch on, like, a career challenges that, like, the generation before me had that I never had to consider. Yeah. But also, you know, I still really want the stuff grounded in now. It just shows us badass women and people of color now that are doing really cool things. And to your point, they're not struggling to overcome feminism. They're not struggling to overcome racism. Um, you know, that was what was so great about both. Right. So, fight seems nice and secure right tight all right just hold on to it there let me just open up the uh, water there it's an old apartment it's washington there you can take your hand off now bones you sure positive huh look at that huh Hmm? nice and secure no drip no drip (laughs) you're uh you're a good student oh only as good as my teacher they would occasionally touch on concepts of gender and race and and they definitely made a lot of humor around stereotypes which was a beautiful way to break them down Mm -hmm. but it was never like she had to prove herself as a woman she'd already proven herself and that was an accepted part of the premise of the show and i feel like we backtracked a little where all the shows i see more recently are talking about the challenges of sexism, are talking about the challenges of racism. And so the characters don't get to have objectives and agency outside of their gender and their race. And that's Mm -hmm. a problem. Do you think though, that there's any merit in showing that struggle? Like the the argument could be made that like showing the struggle could help other people understand it more and appreciate it more and then give them the said platform. Cause I totally agree that like having like going with, the character of bones having her already be in her element is like inspiring and you don't like like who cares like you don't have to show what she went through to know that she is who she is but do you think that there's some element where you know we might be stuck in kind of a showing of a past right now but could that lend itself later down the road to just letting characters be if that makes sense Maybe, but, I, but I'll equate the danger here um, through a different lens, which is, um, so I worked with the World Science Festival two years ago and when their program was focused on women in science to do a lot of their like marketing brand content storytelling. And um, it was challenging because what was frustrating for me, and it was very well-intentioned, female-led, non-educational nonprofit, but with Brian Green, who's a male scientist, as the main figurehead um, and leader of it spokesperson and um what was interestingly happening is i was creating all of this content and we were creating all this content promoting it that were highlighting historical figures right like women who didn't get the credit and they chose that as the theme so they highlighted okay. all of these women who'd had their nobel prizes stolen who'd had their research stolen who existed in times where women couldn't own property couldn't vote and couldn't even take the credit for the things that they had made Sheesh. and that was beautiful on some level but what was frustrating for me is that In the actual event programming, the majority of the panels still had living male scientists, and there weren't a lot of living female scientists on the panels. Hmm. And so what's happening is if we're splitting it 50-50, where like half the people were showcasing as women and half as men, and the majority of those stories overarching are about women from the past, 
and the majority of the stories on the men's side glorify again like the Elon Musk and the Jack Dorsey's and the people who are making change now, then what happens is we're creating a new class of hidden figures. And mm-hmm. that's not what you want to do. I don't want to have to celebrate the amazing women who are doing stuff now, 50 to 100 years from now, because we didn't have space for them in our media and our news cycle. I got you. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. Yeah, rather than you you would build this cycle of, oh, possibly women are just going to be unsung when you need to kind of sing their praises in the now. No, that makes sense. I like that. Um, this show went on. All right. First of all, how many episodes do you think of Bones exists? A lot. More than 100, for sure. 245. I was looking it up and I was like, I know this show has been on a while and I wasn't sure if it was still on or not, but yeah, it ran for 12 years and I see the episode count is 245. And what's crazy to me is that a, a show can last that long and B that it's an hour long show and it had like full seasons, like no half orders. Like they're all like at least 20 episodes. Have you ever, contemplated from coming from like you have a production background have you ever contemplated how much work and time would go into making all like almost 22 hours a year yeah I mean, that's <laughs> definitely a decade of somebody's life yeah really beautiful um yeah no i mean i think it's great it was also during like the golden era of tv right where you could get away with budgets and do that and now mm-hmm towards streaming or to your point it's changing with the netflix stream show max is going to have 10 episodes and they're going to run at max three seasons yeah i do worry about that because you know again we talk about character arcs so one of the character arcs i love in bones is the two lead characters booth and brennan are great foils for each other it's like the quintessential what we call meet cute moment of two yeah. characters who are so different they're going to hate each other in the beginning and then they're going to slowly learn to to, to like what each other can do to balance and learn. So um, what was really nice is, um, you know, Bones' character is hyper logical. She doesn't believe in gut feelings. She's like, your, you know, your, your gut is full of shit. Don't trust it. Like, you have to verify with logic everything. Yeah. It's actually like weirdly very much my personality type. And then, you know, Booth's personality is he is like only gut and only heart and he doesn't need to verify anything he's like quick to shoot quick to jump on what he thinks is you know um gonna happen and over time they sort of learn to trust each other and realize that like a balanced approach is really important you need head and you need heart uh-huh. i'm going home great will we okay will we just skip this part i find you very condescending on me i'm condescending i'm not the one who's got to mention that she's got a doctorate every five i years. am the one with the doctor yeah well you know what i'm the one with the badge and the gun huh? you know you're not the only forensic anthropologist in town <laughs> yes i am the next nearest is in montreal parlez-vous francais what's it gonna take Full participation in the case. Fine. Not just lab work, everything. Oh, you want spit in my hand? We're scalling a molder. I don't know what that means. It's an olive branch. Just get back in the car. And so Bones' character learns to empathize more and learns to trust her gut and intuition a bit more. And, and Booth's character starts to think about logic and doesn't always rush into situations and like gives things more pause before he like jumps to a conclusion. Mm-hmm. And and I think seeing that is is really beautiful. And I don't know that you can give characters those same fulfilling arcs in really short runs. Like, and it's even hard to do it in movies, which is why I think we oversimplify a lot of movies. Or like you see what Marvel did, which was great, right? Which is that it's just like an ever running comic. Like each film yeah. is kind of building on the last film and you can watch them singularly in the same way you can watch a Bones episode singularly and feel a fulfilled story happen. Mm -hmm. But but if you watch them sequentially, you get this beautiful story of how these characters evolve and change and and learn and grow. And that's such an important part of society is like, we come to a point in society that's really frustrating from social media, where we we are like facts, bitches. Like we treat science like it's facts. We Mm -hmm. treat the only moment that exists is this present moment. We've gotten like weirdly Buddhist, but not in a empathetically Buddhist way. And forget that like, life is about change and adapting and you shouldn't be who you are today and who you were 10 years ago right because you're yeah. going to evolve and the world's going to evolve 
And that's something that I would love to see more of in characters is like making sure that we show the ways in which people can change. Is there anything I kind of we kind of touched on this earlier, but is there anything at all you're watching right now that is kind of that you're really taking to heart that you feel like a lot of people should be watching that kind of like is either important for the now or important for thinking about how the future should be portrayed? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I mean, there's so many. It's hard for me to go because like I am in this industry, so I watch a lot of stuff like, mm-hmm. just by nature of trying to get a sense of what the landscape is. Um, and it's hard because I'm spending a lot more time the last couple months focused on my particular content that I want to make. So I haven't been as plugged into the most recent recent stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the documentary um, Ava DuVernay made called The 13th, it, I yeah. think essential watching for absolutely everyone because it touches on the history but she also does this in this beautiful way that she's highlighting lots of like senators and people today who are trying to change legislation and trying to change that dialogue for the better so i think she does a good way of blending like the history while elevating current voices Mm -hmm. that is really beautiful um and yeah i mean i think so many people just don't know that right like to your point um there's a lot of like overlooked stuff and hidden figures and we need to get that out there right i had cousins like i had people in my family who didn't know that the 13th amendment meant that people who were criminals couldn't you know be free and then like didn't know now that like felons can't vote and so there's yeah. like systemic way to disenfranchise voters that are yeah. poor and people of color and and i think like you know really simple facts like that are important um that people people know and, and, and understand yeah, um, 13th. Yeah, that's been making its rounds very recently about being like just promoted more. And I saw it a couple of years ago and just it completely blew my mind because like I didn't know. Any, I mean, like it's kind of one of those things where I couldn't even tell if I was just blind to it or if I literally just didn't know. Like if it was just going on in the background or just I had never been taught. And like I don't believe kind of stemming on the same issue that growing up education like no one taught us about what juneteenth was and i only found that out a couple of years ago because i watched an episode of atlanta like and i was like what is i was like what is this i haven't heard of this and i looked it up and i was like why have i never heard of this or why has no one taught me this and i think with you know you can argue that there's too much content nowadays but if the right content is getting out there and it's educating us more than our like public or private schooling did like growing up, like I'm all for it. Like one of the things I always say is that I think the Netflix shows big mouth and sex education have done more to teach sexual health than the years of quote unquote health class coming up in a public school system, which I don't know if you've seen those shows, but they, they're yeah. definitely. Yeah. Sex education particularly is great. But so this is another good example, right? You bring up Atlanta and you bring up sex education. And the primary difference between both of those pieces of content is Atlanta is mostly geared, at least initially, the way it was sold towards an African American audience, a predominantly African American cast. Mm-hmm. And Sex Education is a predominantly white show that has like supporting characters of color, and eventually they actually do a good job of having some story arcs in there for those characters. Mm-hmm. But it's predominantly a white show. Like let's mm-hmm. just be clear about that. And what is kind of frustrating, where I hope the future goes, and I don't know anything that really architects this, is maybe Scandal. Scandal did it really well for a while, but it was in the politics community. But it's, um, so yeah, Shonda Rhimes. But um, you typically have that divide. There's like white people content and black people content. And the way that marketers have even spent their advertising dollars and done their marketing has reinforced that concept of those divisions of how content gets financed and produced and made and advertised again. Right. And that's a problem because you don't get these really beautifully diverse and inclusive casts. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, again, to come back to Bones, which, are, which is still probably very much a white show if you look at the majority of the characters, but the things that were groundbreaking for 2005 is that her boss is an African-American man and then an African-American woman and an African-American woman actually for much more of it. I think it's just the first season that's an African American gentleman. Um, and then, you know, they do, they start to bring in people that are Muslim, they start to bring in people that are Asian. The Crusades, the Inquisition, are these events guided by 
a religion of peace? No, they were guided by self-important men who think they know more than the God they claim to worship. This was not the work of religion. It was arrogance. It was hypocrisy. It was hate. Those horrible men who hijacked those planes hijacked my religion that day too. They insulted my God. So no, this isn't too difficult. It's a privilege to be able to serve this victim, to show him the care and love that was so absent that day. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry. And thank you for taking the time to set me straight. Yeah, that was awesome, dude. They brought in a guy that was like from the South and the Bayou, which is like a minority within white people that we sometimes forget about because they don't get shown in media as much mm -hmm. as like Duck Dynasty or like yeah. Tiger King, but like we, we pretend they're idiots. And they played against the grain and had this beautiful character that was from that community and hyper intelligent and nice, right? And so um, what I really want for the future is for us to figure out pieces of content that are very diverse. Like we did that with Financially Naked. We had a Hispanic gentleman. We had a Hispanic woman married to a white guy and she's the engineer and he's the nurse. So it's much more like phones, archetypes. Um, you know, we have people of color. We had a gentleman who's LGBTQ. So I really think like finding shows and content that has that diverse array of characters and they're not just there tokenistically to talk about their specific problems, but they're there to solve the larger problem that is in the story and everyone works together collaboratively on that. And that way Bones is super ahead of its time and I just haven't seen as much content like it since, which is probably why I still referenced it when you were like, what's your favorite thing that you want to talk about? Well, I mean, it only ended three years ago. That's how long it went on. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's yes, for it to still be in your, uh, and your consciousness is still totally acceptable because yeah, in three years ago. Um, so where where did the line get drawn? Is it like thirty years? It'll be out of date. Like fifty years? When is it gone with the wind down? <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Like I wonder. <laughs> well, what do you think? How far into the future will shows like this kind of not stand up, or will it continue to stand up? Do you think for another decade? I mean, I think it's already problematic. If I'm being mm -hmm. honest the sense of it really like this show another good one is like law and order svu which is also like a female-led show mm -hmm. um, it is a it's a white form of feminism that's not hyper intersectional right because it glorifies our police system and it um basically makes you think that you should fear criminals for the most mm -hmm. part and that um there's a lot of criminals and we need a whole team to keep criminals out mm -hmm. and we're already starting to realize that that is a very like false story that we've been fed because it props up the concept of for-profit prisons and our judicial system is beyond reproach hmm. that we can just use science to like make sure that we're doing this properly and it's not true right like actually dna tests were really problematic when they first came out they were not hyper accurate the science hadn't been super backed up and the labs weren't using them effectively and so like there's a whole body of social justice to overturning cases that had bad DNA and then like they resample with better science saying to show that this person was like falsely imprisoned. Mm -hmm. And I think like that, you know, we do have to acknowledge that like, you know, as much as I love Sherlock Holmes and I love Nancy Drew and I, I love a good murder mystery story, that came out of a storytelling paradigm and ethos that came up around the same time we launched policing as a business in the 1800s. And has stayed as we've stayed telling these stories about how crime works and punishment. And um, they're not highly accurate, right? And not everybody is a serial killer and a murderer and a rapist. And we do need to talk about those things because they're very problematic. But but I do think we sort of like Bones and a lot of those shows, Law and Order, like glorify the trust that you should have in the system. But these mm -hmm. people are always right. And they will always solve it properly and they'll always get the bad guy. Yeah. And that isn't how our justice system works. Yeah. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Um, yeah, with a lot of these just cop shows. And I'm a sucker for them. Like I love detective shows. And it's not even the it's not even the fact that that's their job. Like it's just what they end up doing. Yeah, so like medicine's a good one, right? I loved house. 
what yeah. I was devastated to learn is House was actually based on a female doctor and scientist, and she consulted on the show and was the science like consultant to verify all the medicine and, and the medicinal facts. Interesting. And we still made it a, a white male protagonist character, which is like always driving me bonkers lately. The more I hear these examples, like Cosmos is written by a woman and executive produced, and then when Carl died, they still gave it to an African American dude, and it's like. As a woman, it's like we've gotten a white male president, <laughs> an African male president. Where do the women fit in kind of a situation? Yeah. I wish it didn't have to be that order. Um, but she interestingly has a show now on, I want to say Netflix or one of them, um, where it is her digging into real life cases like this that are just oh. super rare. And um, she uses crowdsourcing and data and online and talks to like doctors and networks to solve really rare medical cases. And I think that that's super cool and I would love 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 to see more shows like that but not done in like a melodrama way like done in a procedural way because mm -hmm. um, like the one everybody always thinks about Grey's, Grey's Anatomy right never really resonated with me because it was so it was so operatic right it was like um the show George Clooney had been on the ER, ER. yeah yeah it's, it's too melodrama it's all about the like the death the emotionality the threesomes whatever right other than about like the medical problems they're trying to solve mm -hmm. and what was so great about house is it was you know bones does this and house is it's it's the scientific method you don't realize you're learning the scientific method but that's what they're doing they have a hypothesis they gather as much data to confirm or deny that hypothesis until they land at a conclusion and that is um something we need to get back in touch with. And I think like the medical community, the law community, there's lots of places we could talk about doing this, but it doesn't have to be with cops and or detectives. And it can still feel like that journey of it's a it's a who done it, right? But the who done it now is a disease or a system or a, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. Um yeah, I didn't know that about house. The thing that I had heard was just that it was basically Sherlock Holmes, but in a medical setting because um, the whole Holmes and Watson house and Wilson type thing. Um, but yeah, well, this has been great. This has been a really good talk. Um, thanks so much for talking with me. Yeah. Thank you for being with me and having me and letting me sort of like, you know, go super feminist. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, that's, that's what we're here for. Like this is the whole reason. Just talk about the deeper stuff behind stuff we watch. This is great. I feel like I haven't had a conversation like this in a while. Maybe it's <laughs> all right jen thanks see ya i can always count on jen to deliver some perspective especially with representation in tv and film and it's actually sparked some conversations i've had with others about what kinds of stories need to be told about underrepresented and possibly underappreciated demographics do we focus on the obstacles that they've had to overcome or do we tell stories about who they are now as opposed to what they went through? It's difficult to separate the two because everyone knows that backstory is important, but I believe there is a way. And hopefully it's people like Jen that can deliver those stories to us. I really wanna thank you guys for listening today. It really does mean a lot. And if you want to check out Jen's show, Financially Naked, check out the episode notes for links or visit gobeyondlab.in slash financially naked. And go ahead and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our episodes. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave a review and we'll sing your praises on the next episode. And if you want to get in touch, tweet at Film Nuts Podcast or shoot us an email using the address hello at filmnutspodcast.com. Okay, that's it for this week. Take care. <laughs>